Hey everyone, welcome into the At Flippin' Hippo's YouTube channel. I'm Star the Flippin' Hippo. Today is Monday, January 25th, and because it's a Monday, that means it's time for What's Sold on eBay. We're going to go back to the old form for these videos and start off with a walk through Instagram. I'll show you our photos of our packages each day just to kind of give you guys an idea of the volume that we do. And then we'll head on over to eBay where I have picked out select items that sold this week for us, whether they're bolos, mistakes, or really good bread and butter brands that flip for us well. Just to give you an idea of what moves for us to help you guys uh, have an idea of what to look for when you're outsourcing or purchasing wholesale. So we're going to start with what we're looking at here. This is today's picture. It looks like a lot because of the way I have it laid out on the table and all the hippos, but it is just 16 packages. Um, that is really bad. <laughs> you guys, that's a really bad weekend for us. Um, historically, our sell-through rate is around 10 a day, which is good for clothing. Used clothing is a 0.5% daily sell-through rate typically. So if you had a thousand listings, you would sell five a day. Uh, plush is even more long tail than that, but we do have remotes and stuff as well. So the higher percentage of sell-through rate on the remotes kind of evens out the lower percentage of the plush. And so we just kind of average out at a 0.5 overall. That's uh, historical for us. Everyone's a little bit different, but it's kind of average for clothing to be like that. Um, and everyone knows plush is long tail. So for a weekend, we should have um, from Friday afternoon through Monday when we ship, we should have 30 packages for an average weekend. This is about half of that. And two of these sales were Poshmark. So there was only 14 on eBay. We know why. We've spent the last couple of weeks on the back end um, going through and removing listings of poop, going through our inventory, working on guides, working on a website, and not listing as much as we should. And this is the result. So we know why it happened. I don't think sales are down right now. I don't think things are bad. I don't think um, a lot of the other resellers that I know and talk to are seeing this. They're seeing normal sales. So don't let this be a harbinger of bad news or anything, guys. This is just the result of not focusing on eBay for a couple of weeks. I mean, probably longer than that. You guys know we took most of December off. Um, so learn from us and don't do what we do. Um, we're trying to get back into the swing of things this week, but we had a couple of wholesale orders shipping in and we have to deal with that. So hopefully we'll be back into our normal swing of things within the next week or two and we'll start to see an uptick in sales. But on the other side of that coin, last weekend we had 41 packages. Now it was an extended weekend. We had Monday, um, Monday off. I was going to say Monday was closed. Monday was not closed. <laughs> the post office was closed on Monday in reverence of Martin Luther King. So we had four days of sales, which should be about 40 sales. And these were all eBay. So, you know, 41 packages, all eBay is really stellar for a four day weekend. So that was that a fluke. I mean, I don't know. And then Wednesday, we had three. Thursday, we had five. <laughs> and then Friday, we had six and only five of those were eBay. One was posh. So the moral of this story is um, list every day. Keep your store active and healthy so that it will remain that way and you'll see your sales stay at where they should be. Um, but if you have to take time off for whatever reason or you choose to work on something else for a while, just expect that you're going to see a drop in your sales. And if you did it intentionally, whether you were on vacation, whether you took some time off, I know some folks took off for the holidays or because of the slow shipping that was going on, or if you decide to work on other projects, if you do it knowingly and willingly and your sales drop, you just kind of have to take it with a grain of salt and say, well, brought it on myself and I know why it happened, which is exactly what we're doing. But let's go over to um, eBay and look at some of the items I've picked out to show you guys. You'll see that some of the higher dollar items sold this week. So that kind of helps um, when you have less volume going out. If your average sale price goes out, that's good. It would be nice if you could have both, right? 
This is a Boyd's Bear. This is Riesling Verde. That is a play on words. Ries Riesling is a type of wine. Bordeaux is a type of wine. He's got little grapes on his sweater. Isn't he cute with his little knit sweater and his little knit grapes? Um, let me hide this. So he's so cute. Anyway, he came um, from Bill and David from when I purchased all of their plush inventory from them. And he was 50 cents. So he sold for best offer of 15 74 and he shipped out today. Boyd's bears are good bread and butter. Some of them will go for more money than others, depending on the bear and the collection. But they are solid bread and butter. They will move. I try to get them for a buck or less. The thing I like about them, and I've mentioned this on the channel before, is typically they're always still going to have these cardboard um, pieces attached to them. And I think it's because Boyd's bears are more of a collector's bear than like a kid's toy or a plush. So they're always in really good condition and have their little um, cardboard name tags, hang tags. And they're not really attached to them like normal hang tags. They just go around their neck with a piece of string. Um, but they almost always have them. You almost always find them with those. And they uh, will move, especially these ones with special editions and cute outfits and stuff. Next up, we have a Hershey's teddy bear. I found him at the Goodwill. He was only 50 cents, and he's recognizable as a Hershey's product. So I did make the decision to take the risk for 50 cents. Most Hershey, Hershey's and Reese's animals are pretty good solid bread and butter. So he sold for $14.24, and he shipped first class. Here we have a Gans Webkin. This is a panda bear. So cute. Panda bears are the cutest bears. Changed my mind. So cute. So you've probably, if you've been around for a while on the channel, you've heard me tell you guys before, Gans Webkins are hit or miss. I take the risk because when I find them, they're 50 cents, sometimes less in wholesale lots. And to me, that's an acceptable risk to bring them home and find out I have a bunch of bread and butter. But they can be from eight up to 30, 40 bucks, depending on which one you get. Some will have codes and some won't. And I have noticed that sometimes those without codes will sell for more than those with. I think it's all dependent on the animals, popularity, the obscurity. Is it oversaturated on the internet? Things like that. So if you like bread and butter, if you're okay with having filler plush in your store and you find Webkin's, you know, 50 cents, 75 cents at yard sales, maybe even a buck, I would say to go ahead and take the risk. Um, you can stand there and comp them if you want. But usually when I find them, there's a whole grouping of them, like 10 or 15, and I just grab them all. Fluff and Stuff Lamb came out of a mystery lot. I think the average cost in there was like a buck a piece when I figured it all out, give or take some change. This is the second lamb. There were two tigers and two lambs of this brand. And this brand, I've discovered, is a bread and butter brand. Now, when I found it in the Mystery Lot boxes, I thought they were poop, but they weren't. Um, in fact, these were some of the first ones to move out of those Mystery Lots when I got them listed. So I would say these are bread and butter, probably. The lamb sold for full price at $13.99 and shipped first class. Next up, we have an Aurora Flopsies. This is Luther Leopard. Now, Aurora can be hit or miss, too. Some of the Aurora plush is just outright poop. Some of it's really good bread and butter. Some of it is higher dollar bolos. Um, this is the Flopsies. Comes with an official adoption certificate. And I believe that these are more sought after and more popular. So this one sold for $13.99 and shipped first class. Next up, we have a seal or a sea lion from Six Flags. Um, this guy is really cute. Seals are super cute. Um, I think that seals and otters are probably the cutest animals in the world, fun fact. Just their little faces. So this guy sold for best offer of 16. Now he came out of a wholesale lot, so he was about a buck, maybe 50 cents. And he shipped first class. Anytime you find plush from any of these theme parks, 
Six Flags. Um, there's one in Ohio, Cedar Point, thank you. <laughs> Cedar Point, Six Flags, out here in Pennsylvania, we have Hershey's and we have a couple of others. I always pick them up. They're worth the risk. Um, most people forget to buy souvenirs, I think, when they're somewhere. So they'll go online to look for one later. Um, and just the animals that they make are usually pretty good. If you ever see um, the petting zoo, that's part of Hershey Park out here in Hershey, PA. So pick those up as well. All right, those were the plush that sold this week. Just six, five, six, six plush. So we're gonna move into clothes. These are Rock and Republic men's jeans, not to be confused with Rock, Rock Revival. Rock Revival are bolos. I have sold used Rock Revival's men's jeans for like 75 bucks in the past. Um, and when I was new, I used to get the two mixed up. But Rock Revival is the bolo. Rock and Republic is the bread and butter. The men's do better than the women's. And I think that's the case across the board with any brand, jeans, shirts, anything. Men's clothing sells faster uh, for more money. And we find that we get less returns with men's clothing. So this pair came out of a wholesale box, about two bucks. Um, sold for best offer of 20. Now, if I were getting these off the rack, I'd probably want them to be on 99 cents day. Um, but two bucks isn't bad for this brand. Let me show you more. These were distressed. And they have the R&R &R on them. Next up, this is a new to me brand that I don't even think I know how to pronounce. Devucci. These came out of a wholesale lot. They were $2, cost of goods, and I had never heard of them before. Um, but they were super unique when I pulled them out, and I was very excited to get them um, photographed, measured, and comped so I could get them up in the store. So they are new, you can see there. And they have their tags and that little sticker on the leg, but they have fur down the side, yo. I'm so excited. <laughs> I was like, I've never seen such fancy jeans. They have like, um, they're a size 38 too, which is really a good size for men's jeans. It's, it's like the plus size for women. Um, they have a leather band around the waist. And they have fur. These were so cool. So I thought they were super cool when I pulled them out. I had a feeling they were going to be worth some dough. And they absolutely were. I took a best offer on them of $45, but they went to an international buyer. So you have to think that person was willing to accept my offer of $45 in addition to all of the customs and the fees and all that expensive stuff they deal with getting it shipped over there. So these are definitely a bolo. If I ever see them again, I will pick them up. Um, I'd never heard of them before they came out of that, that wholesale box. I've never seen them in the wild. So Devucci. You guys, this is one of my favorite bread and butters. Uh, YMI itself is poop. I do not source YMI jeans. However, the wanna bet butt jeans, absolutely. Longtime viewers remember when I used to find these all the time. I used to go to the Goodwill on 99 cent day at least twice a month and come home with two or three pairs. Um, they're easy to find. They're almost always smaller junior sizes, so they almost always ship first class, which I love. And I would find them for 99 cents all the time. They say wanna bet a butt right on the tag. So make sure if you're picking up YMI that it's the wanna bet a butt. These are shaping, slimming jeans. So they're like the Chico So Lifting or So Slimming or the Not Your Daughter's Jeans uh, Tummy Tuck or Lift. Any jeans that shape, slim, lift, anything like that, I always grab. Women love those. They're comfortable. They make you look good. They make you feel good about yourself. Women just love them. So the YMI version is the wanna bet a butt. And it's so fun to say, wanna bet a butt. Anyway, these are the high rise. They're junior size nine, 99 cent cost of goods. And they sold for $23.74. That's what I love about them. Sometimes I'll get 18 for them. If they stick around, I get the best offer. Um, but I start them pretty high, and then I just go from there. 
they almost always sell fast within a week of being listed. They just fly out the door. I've had some that have sat around for three weeks to a month, but I don't think any longer than that. And um, again, these were twenty three seventy four, but they can go anywhere from eighteen to twenty four. So I was happy with those. Next up, we have some Joe's jeans. These are bell bottom flares. I believe these ones came out of a thread up box. I don't have much luck finding Joe's in the wild. Typically, it comes to me in thread up boxes or wholesale. These are super cute, really wide bell bottom legs. Um, yeah, the 25. So if you're measuring leg openings, you measure, don't do this to me. Look at it. Do you see it? So you measure from one end to the other of the hem flat. And then you double it, and that's your leg opening. And typically, 19 or higher typically is flare. So if you have like a 25, that's super bell bottom flare. So you can use wide leg, you can say bell bottom, you can use all those great keywords. Joe's is a good brand. Of course, it used to go for a lot more money, um, but it's part of the race to the bottom. I did take a best offer on these at 24 and they shipped in a padded flat. Next up, we have a pair of Levi's 525 Perfect Waist. This pair sold for $35.99. Love me some Levi's. So the thing with Levi's is you're gonna have everything from like the Denizen Levi's that sell for around 20 bucks up to, um, they have one that's a skinny, I forget the name of it, but it sells for like 50 or 60. So I do like Levi's, I will source them, but make sure you comp them. If you have personally never seen the number that you're listing, or if it has a name like the Perfect Waist uh, Boot Cut 525, if you've listed those before and you're like, oh, I sold those for $35.99 or $36 or $40 or whatever it was, then just list them for wherever you had them before. But whenever I get a new to me or I haven't seen them in a while, I do comp them. And I don't only look at eBay. I look on Terrapeak as well to get the historical um, sell price for the last year. But Levi's, it's gonna depend on the style, what kind of Levi's they are, like these are the 525s. So just, you know, pick them up, pay a couple bucks for them, but make sure you comp each and every pair because you could have a stack of 10 pairs of Levi's and have them range in price from 20 up to 60, depending on what you have. And you can always do research um, on Terapeak and eBay in the solds and kind of look at all the different kinds of Levi's there are and kind of know which price points which ones go at. So when you're outsourcing, maybe you don't like bread and butter, so you just focus on the higher dollar ones. I like them all. If you hear that squeaking, it's a train out back. Sorry, guys. There's a train um, coming to a stop on the tracks. So I don't know why. And it's really being loud. But yeah, I pick up any Levi's. Um, I like bread and butter. So again, these ones sold for $35.99. Um, they were 99 cents and they shipped in a padded flat. Okay, now we have a billionaire boys club shirt. So this came to us in a wholesale lot. Average cost of goods per item in that lot was about two bucks. Billionaire boys club is a bolo brand. If you ever find these t-shirts, this is what the tag looks like. Let me show you. They're made in Japan, um, seem to be pretty popular. They comp really well. This particular t-shirt sold for $34.29 and it shipped first class. And last but not least, we have a pair of encrypted men's jeans. These came from a wholesale lot, cost was $2. And a lot of jeans that came out of that lot were new to me brands for men and sold for a lot of money. So I was very excited with that wholesale lot. Very pleased with my purchase. Um, these are encrypted and they are Moto Acid Wash. So what is a Moto jean? They look like this. They have these ridges in the front on the legs. You can call them Moto. And Acid Wash looks like this. So you guys can see it. I took a close up of it so you can see the Acid Wash. I think what made these ones comp so high is the fact that they were Moto and Hassan Wash. But all of the encrypteds I got out of that box seem to be one or the other or both. So it may just be that brand. 
again, it was new to me. I'd never heard of it until I got it, and that holds a lot. But it is now on my radar. I'll be looking for it, as well as those Davucci's. Um, really good brands. This is why I like buying wholesale, because I learn new things. And I can get items and brands and types of things from other states that I probably would never find in the wild here. So, all right, guys, let me know in the comments what you think, questions, comments, concerns. Let me know how your sales are going. I like to hear from you guys. Uh, hit the thumbs up before you leave. It really helps the channel. If you have not already, please subscribe. It really helps us out so much. Helps us feed all our hungry hippos. And join our Facebook group. It's called Flippin' Hippos Reseller Pod. Free to join. Link is in the description box. Until next time, guys, go be productive, go make some money, and as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Y'all are the best. Bye.